Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Today is the 9th of Dhul Qa'dah, 1441. We're in the book, Sifatu Salatu Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in a takbir ila taslim ka'anna kataraha. And we're on the section of important notes about sending prayers on the Prophet of the Ummah. And we're on, we're on point number four. It should be known that types numbers one and four are the ones which the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught his companions when they asked about the manner of salah on him. So this has been used as evidence that these are the best ways of doing the salah on him. For he would not choose anything for them or himself except the best and noblest. Imam Nabawi, as mentioned, endorsed in Road of the Talibin, that if a man were to take an oath to do the best possible salah on the Prophet wasallam, this could not be fulfilled except in these ways. Subki has given another reason. Whoever does salah with these types has made salah on the Prophet wasallam with certainty. And whoever does so with other words is in doubt whether or not he has performed the prayers as requested. This is because they said, how do we send prayers on you? And the Prophet replied, say. Thus, defining their salah on him as they're saying such and such. This was mentioned by Haytami in Ad-Dar al manbud He then said that the objective is achieved with all the types which have occurred in the authentic hadith. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa mawala. The point number four, basically, the Sheikh had at the beginning, he said that the first type of Salat al-Ibrahimiyya, salutation upon the Prophet, the first type, and I'm going to mention it now, is the best of the types and also the type number four. The reason behind this is as the scholars like Imam al-Nawawi and Imam al-Subki, is that when the companions came to the Prophet وسلم, to ask him, how to make salutation upon you, Messenger of Allah. So the Prophet wasallam, he told them that this is the way how to make salutation. Now, then the Shaykh al-Albani, after that, he mentions the saying of al-Haythami, where he says that the person, if he made an oath to say the best of the salah upon the Prophet, can be done by anyone, not just like Imam al had said, that is the fourth type which is Allahumma salli, which is the one I've learned when I was a kid. Allahumma salli ala nabiyyi Muhammad, ala nabiyyi Muhammad al-Ummi wa ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala ali Ibrahim. Wa barik ala Muhammad al-Nabiyyi Muhammad al-Nabiyyi al-Ummi wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala ali Ibrahim fil alamina inna ka hamidu majid. This is the only one that's got fil alamina. And we got the first one, which is Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ahli baytihi wa ala azwajihi wa dhurriyatihi, which is the full version of Al Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala ali Ibrahim, inna ka hamidun majid, wa barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ahli baytihi wa ala azwajihi wa dhurriyatihi, kama barakta ala ali Ibrahim, inna ka hamidun majid. So this is the first two. But the Shaykh al Albani, when he brings the last statement of the Imam al Haythami in a Durr al Manbud, where he says that if the person had actually made an oath to say the best of the salah, then he could do with any of those we have mentioned before. And we had seven ways of saying the salah upon the Prophet wasallam. So we would say all of them okay. Yes, the Prophet of Allah, he taught them that one when they came to him, but it doesn't mean he taught others as well. And because those other salutations, they came from the Prophet wasallam. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. So you could say any of them, but now we go to a point, which is, uh, and that is number five, and that is links to number four directly, and that is? Point number five. It should be known that it is not valid to combine all these ways into one way of salah. And the same goes for the different tashahuds given previously. In fact, that would be an innovation in the religion. The sunnah is to say different ones at different times, as Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah has explained in his discussion of the takbirs of the two Eids in Majmu' al Fatawa. And also, Imam ibn al Qayyim in his book, Al Jala, 
in which he had made a discussion of this very good regarding this issue, which is that you're not supposed to uh, combine all of those adhiyya as some of those scholars who came later on who had said so. It's the best to put all of them in one, in one dua, the seven sayings of the salutation. And that is not correct because if you do the seven and lump them together, or you take part and put it with the second part, with the third part and the fourth part, you brought a salutation upon the Prophet, which was not one of those who had the Messenger of Allah taught the companions. It's a, it's a bid'ah. Basically, it's a bid'ah to do that. So, just like we have talked about the dua al-istiftah, if you remember, subhanak Allah, buhamdik, or wajjahtu wajjah, you cannot lump the two together if you choose one of them. Same thing with the tashahud, and we have said, Tahiyyatu lillahi wa salawatu tayyibat. You have to choose one of them. You can't lump one from here, from Aisha to Abdullah ibn Umar, and put them together and put a salawat with zakiyat with. You have to choose one of them. And the best actually is actually to, you know, one tashahud is this, and another tashahud is another one. That's the best one, the best way of doing the sunnah. You do this one time sometimes, and do that one sometimes. It doesn't matter even in one prayer. Let's say one prayer has got two tashahud. First tashahud, you bring the first type. Second tashahud, you bring the second type. Following prayer, you make bring the third type. It doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter in one prayer. As long as in one tashahud, you don't lump them together. In one tashahud, you don't lump them together. And this is basically the point number five. And point number six, finally, please. Point number six. Alama Siddiq Hassan Khan says in his book, after giving many a hadith about the excellence of repeated salah on the Prophet وسلم, in which he says, There is no doubt that the foremost among the Muslims in sending salah on him وسلم, are the people of hadith and the, and the narrators of the purified sunnah. For it is one of their duties in this noble branch of learning to make salah on him before every hadith. And so the tongues are always engaged in his mention. May Allah grant him mercy and peace. There is no book of sunnah or collection of hadith, be it a jami', musnad, mu'jam, juz, etc., except that it comprises of thousands of ahadith. Even one of the least bulky ones, Suyuti's al jami' al saghir contains 10,000 ahadith, and the rest of the collections are no different. So this is the saved sect, the body of the people of Hadith, who will be the closest among men to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam on the day of resurrection. And the most likely to be rewarded by his intercession sallallahu alayhi wasallam. May my mother and father be sacrificed for him. This excellence of the people of Hadith cannot be surpassed by anyone unless he does more than what they do something which is well nigh impossible. Therefore, O desirer of good, seeker of salvation, no matter what, you should be a muhadith or be close to the muhadithin. Do not be otherwise, for apart from that, there is nothing which will benefit you. And this is all of it from the saying of Sadiq Hassan Khan in his book, Nuzul Al-Abrar Bil-Ilm Al-Ma'thur Min Al-Ad'iyati wal adkar Naam. Now, Shaykh al-Albani says, I ask Allah, blessed and exalted, to make me one of these people of hadith, who are the closest among men to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa Perhaps this book will be a testimony to that. May Allah shower his mercy on Imam Ahmad, who recited, The religion of Muhammad is in narrations. The best mounts for a young man are the traditions. Turn not away from hadith and its people, for opinion is night while hadith is day. A young man can be ignorant of the guidance, although the sun is shining in all its splendor. Right, this is uh, basically poetry. You're not going to be working if you translate poetry into English. Because it's very hard to make poetry of Arabic into as poetry in English. But it is possible, but it's not going to be as beautiful. The Arabic language, the Arabic language, the Arabic is the language of the Quran. Deen al Muhammadin Akhbaru Ni'ma al Matiyah Lil Fata Atharu Latar Rabanna Anil Hadithi wa Ahlihi 
فالرأي ليل والحديث نهار ولربما جهل الفتى أثر الهدى والشمس بازغة لها أنوار Even when you recite the Arabic, it sounds much more of, sorry, to say the English language. Right, this is what Imam Ahmad to say, basically, to sum up, just up to what he just said now, to summarize, um, that the people of Al-Hadith, the narrators of the Hadith, they live with the Hadith. Because they live with the Hadith, they will be the ones who always saying, صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم اللهم صلي عليه وسلم تسليما كثيرا because they mention in Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم all the time so they are the ones who are from the definitely the same sect whom the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said that the Jews had split into 71 the Christian split into 72 this Ummah will split into 73 groups all of them are to be in the hellfire except for one messenger of Allah which one Upon what I am on and my ashab, my companions. So this is the safe text. This is the one which is Al-Isaba, Al-Ta'if Al-Mansura. La tazaru ta'ifatu min ummati rahiyin ala al-haq, la yadurruhum man khadalahum wa la man khalafahum hatta ya'ti ya amrullah. There will be a group prevailing upon haq, truthfulness. They will not be harmed from the ones who are opposing them, nor they will be let down from those who will let them down from amongst themselves. And they will be upon this haqq until the day of resurrection. They're going to be harmed not by the ones who are from the outsiders or will let them down from the insiders until the day of resurrection. So these are the same sect in the Sheikh al Albani said, who else is going to be? Apart from the, those who are living with the hadith of the Prophet قال رسول الله قال رسول الله قال رسول الله قال الله قال رسول الله This is the knowledge. Now, continue please. He sallallahu alayhi wasallam also set the guidance of dua in this tashahud as well saying When you sit after every two rak'ahs then say All compliments are due to Allah till the end of that supplication and then said then you should select of this supplication what is most pleasing to him so we understand that the tashahud al-awsat is compulsory the tashahud al-awsat is compulsory it's not a pillar it is compulsory and nor it is recommended and we have discussed how to refute, refute the argumentation which says that it is not compulsory because it could be sufficed by two sajda of sahab. We've refuted that argument. You refer that to that, uh, to that class. I think it's this, I think last week's class. And we said that if we forget and you stood up completely, then you cannot sit down. And then you do two sajda of sahab. But if you are not completely standing up, then sit down, make the shahud, and there is no sajda of sahab. We said the sunnah is to do it secretly. That's, I mean, silently, I should say. And also, we said that after that, you say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. And that's important because people, they don't do that. They just say, tahiyyat, and that's it. So, this, all of it, compulsory. Now, after that, Prophet of Allah, he said, that is to choose whatever you like from the dua, which has been mentioned in the tashahud, which is seeking refuge, for example, from the four or the five. All of that, that's not compulsory. This will become compulsory at the last tashahud. Those du'as, which is to seek refuge from the four or the five, it becomes compulsory. So, you now we're going to go to, inshallah, the standing to the third and the fourth rakah. We haven't got much to do, by the way. Hopefully, inshallah, we'll finish. Hopefully, by my next class, maybe. Naam. Standing up for the third and then the fourth rak'ah. Next, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would get up for the third rak'ah with takbir. And he ordered the one who prayed badly to do so. Then do that in every rak'ah as before. When he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood up from I the And every rak'ah and every sajda should say. Only says rak'ah here. No, in every rak'ah and every sajda. Okay. 
when he sallallahu alayhi wasallam stood up from the sitting position he would say takbir and then stand up and he sallallahu alayhi wasallam would raise his hands with his takbir sometimes when he wanted to stand up for the for the fourth rak'ah he would say allahu akbar allah is the greatest and he ordered the, and he ordered the one who prayed badly likewise <coughs> as before and he sallallahu alayhi wasallam would raise his hands with his takbir sometimes he would sit up straight on his left foot at ease until every bone returned to its proper place then stand up supporting himself on the ground and he would clench his fists supporting himself with his hands when standing up he would recite al fatiha in both these rak'ahs and ordered the one who prayed badly to do that in the dhuhr prayer he would sometimes add a few ayat to this as has been explained under recitation in the dhuhr prayer there is a footnote here for uh, when he used to you know put the fist to get up yes as one who needs though yeah the, can you read the footnote so it's, it literally means as, some, as someone who needs dough. And the next footnote about, the, about standing up, then it is found in Bukhari and Abu Dawood. As for the hadith, he forbade that a man should support himself with his hand when getting up during prayer. It is munkar and not authentic. As I have explained in Sadsila al-Ahadith al-Da'ifah 967. So the hadith which is forbidding the person to put his hands when he gets up, that hadith is munkar. It's not just da'if. It's like equivalent to da'if jiddan. Very weak. It's not acceptable. Munkar, whether it is in the matin or in the sanad. Munkar. Not acceptable. It does negate and contradict a hadith which is sahih. That is the Prophet of Allah. He used to ya'jin, meaning like kneading the dough when he gets up, which is this way. And he would get up from the third rak'ah to the from the second rakah to the third rakah, like he got up from the first to the second. On the first to the second, there was Jalsa al Istiraha, if you remember. Now it's this, from the second to the third, there is the Shahud, of course. Now, where to make the takbir? I think Brother Faisal, Jazallah khair, and he was very, you know, precise regarding this very good question. But these questions are very, very, I would say, delicate questions. You don't find them there in the book exactly. Where do you raise up your hand? Uh, myself as well, I was thinking about it for a long, long time. And I've asked you, and, and still I'm not really uh, full. I still am hungry. Okay. So, our Sheikh Al-Albani, rahimahullah, in this book, he does not tell us clearly, does he, when he raise up from the rak'ah to the sitting position, and then he gets up to the, the sorry, uh, from, the, from the first to the second, from the first to the second. Does he, when he gets up, or when he completes up in the Jalsa Siraha, and we said the correct opinion, Allahu A'lam, is when he is getting up. He can't just do it while he is sitting in the Jalsa Al-Istiraha. But now, alhamdulillah, that you are making tashahud. After you finish the tashahud, you say Allahu Akbar when you're sitting down, and then you get up. So saying Allahu Akbar now is when you're sitting down. And that's been clearly indicated by the Shaykh Al-Albani, rahmatullahi alayhi, in his book, where he says, وَيُكَبِّرُ jalisa." The sunnah is to make takbir jalisa. Not when you get up. If you see a number of people, they finish getting up, and then they make takbirat, uh, the, the getting up. That's not correct. That's not correct to make this, raising up the hands with the takbir, after you got up. It's not correct. At all. Correct, correct is to do it while you are down. So you finish the shahud, then you get up. As from the getting from the first to the second, we said when you are lifting up your head, Akbar, and then you just set the istiraha and then you get up to the second rakah. So in tashahud, okay, you see, then you say Allahu Akbar and you get up. Now, raising up the hands either with, before, or at the same time, just like takbirat al haram, like all takbirat. So Allahu Akbar, that's with. Or raise up your hands and they say Allah Akbar, or you say Allahu Akbar, then you raise up your hands, but you can't raise up your hands delayed until you are absolutely up and you're about to start your Fatiha. طيب. Now we go to the Qunut, please. Qunut in the five prayers because of a calamity. 
when he sallallahu alayhi wasallam wanted to supplicate against someone or supplicate for someone he would perform qunut in the last rak'ah after ruku'ah after having said sami allahu liman hamida okay can you just rabbana wa lakal hamd can i just ask you there's a footnote for when he makes qunut can you read that for me qunut carries several meanings example humility devotion what is meant here is the special supplication while standing during prayer jazakallah now so we're going to continue now he would make qunut in the last rak'ah after ruku' when he says sami allahu liman hamida allahumma rabbana wa lakal hamd so when he's completely up and then after that he says he would supplicate loudly raise his hands and those behind him would say ameen Continue, please. I he was known you. to perform a kunut in all five prayers. Although he would only perform a kunut in them when he supplicated for a people or supplicated against a people. For example, he once said, O oh Allah, rescue Al-Walid ibn Al-Walid and Salama ibn Hisham and Ayyash ibn Abi Rabi'ah. O oh Allah, harden your penalty on the tribe of Mudar and cause for it years of famine, like the years of Yusuf. O oh Allah, curse Lahyan and Ru'al and Dakwan and Usayya who disobeyed Allah and his messenger. The footnote then, now when he raises up his hands. Oh no, no, just finish, finish the last sentence please. Then, then you say, he would say, Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest when he had finished Qunut and prostrate. Okay, right. Can you just go to the footnote what he says when he raises up his hands? To raise the hands in Qunut is the madhab of, of Imam Ahmed and also Ishaq ibn Rahawi. As for wiping the face with the hands... Wiping the face which is like that, as some people would do. As for wiping the face with the hands, it is not reported in his position and is thus an innovation. As for outside of the prayer, it is not authentically reported. All that has been transmitted in this regard is either weak or very weak. As I have shown in Da'if Abi Dawood 262 and Sidsilla al Haditha al Sahiha 597. This is why Iz ibn Abdul Salam said in, his, said in one of his fatwas, only an ignorant person does it. Right. So this is the Qunut, which we call the Qunut of Nawazil. How, much, how many Qunuts do we have in the prayers? Two types of Qunut Qunut al Nazila, which is for the crisis. And the second qunut is the qunut of the witr, as we're going to see it, inshallah, in a minute. The qunut in nawazil, when there's a crisis, and we need to make sure that we understand that qunut in terms of what is the correct and what is the incorrect. Okay, so the qunut <coughs> and nawazil is to be said in the last rak'ah after the ruku. Okay, the last rak'ah after the ruku, and it's in all prayers. Now he says, after he says, Sami Allah liman hamida, then you get up and then say, Rabbana wa lakal hamd, or Allahumma Rabbana wa lakal hamd. And he says he would make this dua loud so that people could hear him from the back. He would raise up his hands and the people behind, he would, they would say, Ameen. He would make it in the five daily prayers and he would not make a qunut except if he wants to call against people. Uh, or he made dua for the sake of people in their favor. And then he gave an example. What are the mistakes that can be done in the Qunut? He's right. First mistake that some of the people make Qunut in Salat al-Fajr specifically. So does it or uh, uh, specifying Salat al-Fajr for Qunut, okay, that is a bid'ah. And this is the Shafi'iyya madhab, or the followers of Shafi'iyya, they do that. It's wrong. It's based upon a hadith, hadith Anas, that the Prophet وسلم, he used to make Qunut al-Fajr all his life until he departed from this dunya. This hadith is unauthentic because in the hadith narrators, the narrator of the hadith, Somebody called Isa ibn Maham and his kunya Abu Ja'far al-Razi. He has other ahadith which are not accepted, like one of those. Uh, remember Allah 
members of Allah to the extent that the people would say to you that you are crazy. So this is crazy hadith actually. It's not really authentic. And also, Anas radiallahu an in the Sahih Hain, Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. The hadith is authentic from him that he said that the Prophet وسلم, made Qurut for one month. One month. He didn't say for Fajr. One month. And he used to call against the people. And then he left. One month. So how can it be he said he made Qunut for one month and then the other hadith which is not authentic he said he made Qunut in the Fajr all his life. It cannot be. So one of them has to be correct. Of course the one which is in Bukhari and Muslim is the one which is authentic. Um, second mistake as well is to make this Qunut before Ruku. In the Witter, yes, but not in the Qunut and Nawazim. So to make this Qunut in the that is after, uh, so before, uh, before the Rukur is not correct. It has to be after the Rukur. Thirdly, to make it with a melody, as we see somebody says, the melody. Allahumma gfir lahum wa rahamhum. No, that's not correct. Also, making it long. It's not be long. Look at the hadith of the Prophet of Allah. This dua, Allahumma jil walid ibn walid wa salamat ibn hisham wa ayyashim. He, he names and names. And then, just about three lines, and that's it. Allahumma alayka bi usayyah asat rasulillah. Usayyah is a tribe, and uh, when he said asat, asat illah wa rasulah, asat from usayyah. He used the same terminology, but when you translate it, he's usayyah wa disibayyah. Usayyah does not sound like the word disibayyah, but in Arabic, usayyah asat, disibayyah. Usayyah is her, the tribe name, and asat, which is the verb meaning it disobeyed. Uh, so prolonging it is not from the Sunnah. Some people make it so long. 20 minutes, half an hour, five minutes, that's not correct. And also, this is a common mistake where we see the Shafi'iyah followers that in the Qunut of Al-Fajr, they say, Allahumma hadini fi man havayt. This is not Qunut Witr, akhi. This is supposed to be Qunut Nazila. So you don't say, Allahumma hadini fi man havayt. This is only for the witter. Also, this dua is to be in the masjid, which is the main masjid. Not any musalla, not any house. To be the main masjid, al masjid al am. Also, from the mistakes that these people do, is that they make a dua for crisis, for something which is like a problem. But it's been a long time ago. So let's say that somebody now, an Imam, he said, Allahumma alayka bil Yahud akhadu Filistin. O oh Lord, punish those Jews who had taken Palestine. Palestine has been taken a long time. So it's not something that has happened in the past. Or somebody going to say, O oh Lord, may Allah, you know, punish those Spanish people because they took, they took Al Andalus. That's, that's about 700, 600 years ago. Okay. You don't do like, for example, those things, okay? So it has to be a new crisis. Also from the mistake, this is number eight, uh, to make it rhyme. Rhyme, there's so much rhyme into it. Uh, ending with a, why do you do that? And also, from the mistakes as well, is that the dua is not suitable. So, for example, you dua against a tribe, against people, because they are destroying the Muslims. So you say, Allahum maktulhum wa farriqhum, farriq, Allahum maktulhum badada wa farriq shamlahum wa jam. May Allah kill the, all these enemies. And then you said, Ya Arham al Oh, you're the Lord of Rahmah. The merciful of the merciful. How can you just link the merciful of the merciful? And when you make a dua, oh Allah, take vendetta of them, kill them, wipe them out. Can't do that. Ya muntaqim. Yes, but not ya arham al rahimi. Also, from the mistakes is to make salah upon the Prophet after this dua. There is no salah upon the Prophet. The dua of the salah of the Prophet is only dua kunut al wutr. Also, from the mistakes, that is, person that does not make jahar in this dua. The dua has to be jahar. Prophet Allah made it jahar, meaning 
loudly so that people can hear him. Okay? So even if you are on your own. But it has to be, this is as well, in the masjid, al-am, the imam, the main imam, he does this. It's not for you to do it at home on your own. But let's say that the imam would done it in the masjid on his own, he does it loudly as well. Number 12, mistake is that to what, as he said, to what the face after this dua, whether it is in the salah or outside the salah, this wiping of the same face or some people do like this, and then he kisses his eyes, all of that, I don't know where they're coming from. Yeah, when you finish food, maybe you lick your, you lick your fingers, but after the dua, you start licking your fingers and putting them in the eyes. It's to do with the ignorance, Allah must have. Also, number 13 mistake, um, making qunut in the nafila it's not correct the qunut is in the obligatory prayer it is not in the voluntary prayer also from the mistakes which is you don't do qunut nawazil we have lots of crashes taking place recent ones we don't find imams that doing any qunut in the main masajid nothing Somebody has to tell them, if we don't give you, if you know, Qunut, we will not give you the salary. He will make Qunut twice a day, maybe. So, from the mistake as well, people are not really being, making the Qunut, no, being left. People that don't know it. How many times you've heard your Imam making Qunut, for example, when something had happened in Gaza recently? How many? You tell me how many. You prayed in your Masajid, Brixton, or any Masjid. You'll find that you don't make. Qunut al-Nawazil. After finishing Qunut al-Nawazil, we go to now to Qunut al-Witr. Tfadl. Qunut in Witr prayer. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to perform Qunut in the odd raka'ah of the Witr prayer, sometimes. And he would perform it before Ruku'ah. Okay, can you just go to the sometimes footnote, please? Footnote. We have said sometimes because the companions who narrated the witted prayer did not mention the kunut in it. Whereas had the Prophet ﷺ done so always, they would have all mentioned it. However, Ubay ibn Ka'b alone narrated the kunut in witr. So this shows that he used to do it sometimes. Hence, this is evidence that kunut in witr is not obligatory. And this is the opinion of the majority of scholars. For this reason, the researching Hanifi scholar Ibn al-Humam recognized in Fath al-Qadir that the view of it being obligatory is feeble and not substantiated by any evidence. This shows his fairness and lack of party spirit for this view which he supported is contrary to his madhab. Which is the Hanafi madhab, which makes it obligatory. Right, so the Qunut al-Witr, we're going to finish now in a minute, what is the Qunut, is that which is done in the Witr Raka'ah. And he said it sometimes. And actually, you have to know that the more that we have the Prophet did not do it, then the one we should to do it. We find it's the opposite. In Ramadan, we find the Imam does more Qunut instead of making, not making Qunut more than the... Uh, even some of the people, they say, now, if, if the Imam did not make Qunut, why did he make the Qunut? Especially on the 27th month of Ramadan. Where the Prophet of Allah, he made Taraweeh, 23rd, 25th, 27th, none of them he made Qunut. None of them. So, um, uh, we're going to talk about the mistakes, inshallah, in a minute. So, and to, he said, he makes it before Ruku'ah. Do we make it after Ruku'ah? We're going to see, inshallah. He taught Hassan ibn Ali, radiallahu anhu, to say after finishing, after, to, to say after finishing his recitation with her, Allahumma hadini fi man hadayt, wa aafini fi man aafayt, wa tawallani fi man tawallayt, wa barik li fi ma a'atayt, wa kini sharra ma qadayt, fa innaka faqdi wa la yuqba alayk, wa innahu la yadhillu man walayt, wa la ya'izzu man aadayt, tbarakta rabbana wa ta'alayt, la manja minka illa ilayk. Right, there's a footnote here, there's a, first before the footnote, there is tanbih. Zad al-Nasai. Al-Nasai, he said, in the, at the end of the Qunut. Can you see that? Yes. Nasai adds at the end of the Qunut, wa sallallahu ala nabi al-Ummi. May Allah send prayers on the unlettered Prophet. Related with a weak Isnad, among those who declared it da'if, 
or Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani and Zurqani. Therefore, we have not included it in our system of combining acceptable narrations. Iz ibn Abdul Salam said in Al Fatawa to send prayers on the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Qunut is not authentic, nor is it fitting to add to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's prayer in any way. This view of his shows that he did not widen the argument by including the idea of bid'ah hasana, good innovation, as some of the later scholars are prone to doing. Stop. Now this is the Sheikh al-Albani opinion, which was at the beginning. Now he comes with his recent research. Go ahead. However, it is proved in the hadith about Ubay ibn Ka'b leading the people during the Naramban night prayers that he used to send prayers on the Prophet wasallam at the end of the Qunut, and this was during the reign of Umar radiallahu anh, transmitted by Ibn Khuzayma in his Sahih. Similarly, it is proved from Abu Halima Mu'ad al-Ansari, who also used to lead them during Umar's rule, transmitted by Ismail al-Qadi and others. So this addition is justified by the practice of the Salaf, and it is thus not fitting to categorically state that this addition is an innovation, and Allah knows best. SubhanAllah. Shaykh al-Albani, he made this book and he's got, you know, renewal print. So many prints. This has been said from a long time ago. Shaykh al-Albani did not take that out. He didn't say, for example, let me take that out because I've changed my mind. Before I used to say that it is bid'ah to say Allahumma salli ala Muhammad in the Witter after the dua. Now he found out that it is authentic. So he never took the first opinion of his. He just put it there. That was my knowledge, according even to the scholars like Elizabeth ibn Abdul Salam, which he supported that argument that it is not being found to make salah upon the Prophet after the Qunut al Witter. Then he said, No, there is a hadith. And the, that's what shows you. The Sheikh al Abban, if you find something, you will leave everybody. Allah ibn Adi salam and all these scholars who said Ibn Hajar al-Qastalani al-Zarqani you will leave there because there is a narration here and this is uh, Uvay ibn Ka'ab leading the prayer and the reign of the Khilaf of Umar that means lots of companions behind him you're talking about Uthman and Ali and all these great companions were behind him Muhammad ibn Sufyan Abdullah ibn Umar and all of them Abdullah ibn Masrud all of them so that means consensus that there is sometimes that he would pray upon the Prophet so, praying upon the Prophet وسلم, after Qunut al Witr, not Qunut al Nawazil, al Witr, Qunut al Nawazil is no salah upon the Prophet, then it is sometimes is no problem. Taib. Also, we find another footnote, please, before you go, and that is, Wala ya izzu man adayt. He says this, Ya Allah Abdullah. There's a footnote. After you finished, Wallahu A'lam, there's a footnote after that. I don't know if you're in English, the same thing. Okay, um, I can't see anything unless I'm not. Okay. This is a footnote which is after you just finished before. That this extra is being confirmed in this hadith as Al Hafid, he said in Talkhis, and I have actually checked it in the Asl, which is the Asl of the Sifat Salat al Nabi. And this is which Al Imam al Nabi he did not find. And it had skipped his eyes. So he had said in Allah Talibin that it is a, an, an addition from the scholars. An addition from the scholars, which is But actually now we know it's from the Prophet, not from the scholars. And then he said, like their addition of okay. And then he said, even though that after that, by lines, he said, uh, and they have gathered together to discipline or to say something against Al-Qadi of Tayyib in which he had denied La يَعِزُّ مَنْ عَدَيْتْ وَقَدْ جَاءَتْ and it was said in Riwayat so, Al-Bayhaqi So Imam Minnawi basically is uh, 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 contradicting himself in the same paragraph but that shows you that everybody makes mistakes let's just go back now to this Qunut al witr and do the following please write uh, first of all, Qunut al Witr is the saying that you have just heard now. Allahumma hadini fi man hadayt up to manja la manja wa min kaili. So, any extra addition to it 
which is or change into the meaning which has been said by the imams, this is a bid'ah. Like for example, they say instead of that is uh, uh, where is he says waqini say they say waqini wasrif anni. They add qini. I've heard this number of times. It became like a hadith. It became this is that. And remember the Prophet ﷺ, he said, when I teach you something, keep to it. Don't increase. Well, do not add. Do not change. Remember the hadith of Barah ibn Azim when he changed Nabi to Rasul? Don't say Rasul. Nabi. Even there is no difference between Rasul and Nabi. Nabi. Because the ad'iya is tawqifiyya. That means words which have secrets behind them, wisdom behind them. Don't change, akhi. don't add. Don't say, wasraf anni. Qini sharra ma qadayt. And then also they add, فَإِنَّكَ تَقْضِي وَلَا يُقْضِي This is the hadith, فَإِنَّكَ تَقْضِي وَلَا يُقْضِي What did they say? فَإِنَّكَ تَقْضِي بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا يُقْضَى عَلَيْكَ Subhanallah. So that means, what you're saying is that that means sometimes Allah makes qada with no haqq, with batil, for example. Allah. Like saying these people when they finish the Quran, صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْحَضِيمُ when you say this, when you finish the Quran, Sadaq Allah al Allah al-Azim is truthful. That means sometimes maybe Allah is not truthful. So in this one is truthful, but maybe you know, be careful. Don't say things that was not mentioned by Prophet or his companions. No Sadaq Allah al When they stop, they stop. They say, Hasbuk, wait, finish. If the teacher wants to finish, you wouldn't say, say Sadaq Allah al We've learned this. Same thing here. In the bil haqqi. Where is bil haqqi coming from? Secondly, making this dua too long, you've heard the haram iman, so haram, except for very few. One day, I don't know this person how he done it on the imams. Very short dua. I don't know if there was. Um... And by the way, Zawla Khairan Ahmad, who was listening here, one of the co hosts, he said to me that Imam al Hudayfi, number of times, number of times, where in Salat al Jinaza had made longer pose after. The fourth takbir. You know that after the fourth takbir, you all know me. Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. That's it. Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And that's it. But he had said Allahu Akbar and he had given time. So I was mistaken to say maybe they told him off after he did that because I was there for once and I've heard him say this. I said, and he never repeated that after this. But I was wrong. Maybe somebody said I've heard him a number of times he did this. Which, alhamdulillah, pushing the sunnah. Um, also from the mistakes we said that is we're making it long mistakes as well to make it with melody melody very few and we have heard alhamdulillah one of the imams in the haram he said it without melody and i was amazed short and no melody I mean, somebody sent it to me one of the ramadans MashaAllah. no melody uh, imam is this hagrabahullah well, he does look long, which is not correct. And even Sheikh Shuraim does it long. And I remember Sheikh Al Albani when we passed in the salutation of Sheikh Ibn Sheikh Shuraim. Sheikh Shuraim, we send him Alik, we send you salam, Sheikh Al Albani. By the way, Sheikh Shuraim is no more than Sheikh Al Albani because the ignorant people, ignorant, you know, Haram Imam, Khalas, is a prophet. But Sheikh Al Albani, amongst the students of knowledge, he's the one who's known, not Shuraim. Shuraim is just known because of his Haram. But Sheikh Al Albani is known because of his knowledge. So one day he said, uh, Sheikh uh, Shalim sent me his salam. He said, which Sheikh Shalim? He doesn't know him. Ah, is he the one who prolonged his, uh, his dua? Say wa alayka salam to him and tell him not to prolong his dua. Sheikh Al-Albani, we say, in Arabic, in Arabic, meaning that he hasn't really, he's not going to be deceived by somebody's combing his hair or his beard. So even if you comb the, the hair of your beard and you're trying to get closer to him, and keep a closed eye from something wrong that you've done, Sheikh al Bani, no. Even if you comb your hair of your beard, if there's something wrong, he will tell you. This is a saying in Arabic. Straight away, he will tell him, you're wrong. In the best of ways, of course. Tell, tell him, alaykum as salam, but tell him, fear Allah, not to prolong your dua in the qunut, al witr. Also, a sajr, which is making the rhyme ending, the same thing as qunut, to make the rhyme words. They make up dua, which has to sound like rhyme, ending with the same letter. Also, that is to make it after the rukur. 
Now, after the ruku' can be done in one position, and that is after the 15th night. So the 15th night and afterwards. 15th, from the 15th night and after of Ramadan. You have the option now to do it before or after. And that leads me as well to another one, which is a mistake, which is addition to this dua. This dua, no addition, except in one circumstances, which is the same one, from the 15th of Ramadan to the end of Ramadan, companions used to add to that dua. But before that, no addition. They stick to this, Allahumma hadini fi man hadayt, to la manja minka illa ilayk. Up to that one. So the addition of making dua for the believers, making dua against the disbelievers, that is to be after the 15th or the 15th nights of Ramadan afterwards. And that is why we could make it as well after ruku, not just before ruku. Okay, where is this from the Sunnah of the people? Where are the Sunnah people to apply this? And also, uh, to make the Salah upon the Prophet all the time, it's not correct. So sometimes you have to leave it. You say the dua without a salah on Nabi Sallallahu Also from the mistakes is that to do it continuously. If you don't do it on the 27th of Ramadan, see how many people are going to object upon you. Or even any night of the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Subhanallah. Akh, it's not from the sunnah to do it all the time. This is a bid'ah. You have to stop sometimes even maybe more than the time that you make the dua in order to make it sunnah because it was not mentioned from the Prophet nor the companions. It's Ubay ibn Ka'b, he had mentioned that the hadith of Al-Hasan and Hussein whom the Prophet taught them the dua of Al-Qunut. Also, to, 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 um, to add to the raising of the hands. The raising of the hands is like this. It's not like that, Akhi. It's not correct. It's, it's like this. This is what you raise in hand. I mean, in front of you. So that's how you make a dua. Make dua like that. No problem making like this, but it's like that, or like this, but okay, or like that, but not like this. This is not correct. Um, we said that it is permissible to make extra dua after the dua, which is after the 15th night of Ramadan. Also from the bid'ah is that some of them, they make the qunut only in the second, okay, the second part of Ramadan. They don't do dua whatsoever in the first, in first 15 days, and then after that, they start making dua of the 15th night. That's not correct. After the 15th night, the 15th night and afterwards is you could increase on the dua. But as I said, sometimes you make dua, sometimes you don't. Also from the mistakes that you don't make jahar in the dua, you make it loudly. Also from the mistakes in the bid'ah, but when the imam says, Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt, they say ameen. Wa'afina fi man afayt, they say ameen. And then when he reaches, فَإِنَّكَ تَقْضِي وَوَقِّنِي أَوَا فَإِنَّكَ تَقْضِي وَلَا يُخْضَى عَلَيْكَ They say, أَشْهَدْ وَلَا يَدِلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْتَ أَشْهَدْ because the meaning of this, uh, we say, for verily you always uh, decree and nobody can decree upon you. And verily nobody can, uh, nobody will get triumph except whom you give in triumph. And nobody will, uh, the one who have given triumph, he will be given triumph. And the one who being humiliation, nobody can get him away from the humiliation. Tabarak, they keep saying, Ashhad, Ashhad the people. Akhi, no. You keep saying, Ameen. That's it. Ameen, Ameen. Not, I testify. I testify. One person, you know, creates something and other people are like, mm, nice, let me say Ashad. Akhi, don't, don't. Or some people say, Subhanak, Subhanak, or to wipe the face, all of that from the bid'ah. Also from the wrong things as well, you don't really do the du'a al-qunut. You've, you've heard some people, they start du'a al-qunut in Ramadan, not Allahumma adina fi man hadai. They start their own du'a and then in the middle, Allahumma adina fi man hadai. It's like, mashallah, it's like a, he's working on a music. It's like he's like, you know, heating up, heating up, heating up, and then Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt. People, they like this. SubhanAllah, they're very, very nasheed in bid'ah. When it comes to the sunnah, they're very lazy. Nasheed means active. Uh, 
so they say for for example as well uh, in their dua something which is we call it i'tida transgressing how for example i ask al jannata wa man wa na'imaha wal qasr al abyad alladhi fiha i ask you jannah and it is uh, and it's bounty okay and then you say and the white palace in it right why is that why not the blue palace for example the green palace why, why do you add things why, this is called they have destroyed themselves those people are um, also increasing and raising of the voice which is in a way that you want to make a cry and all of this hypocrisy, be careful. Um, so when it comes, for example, uh, some of the verses and start making yourself cry, Wallahi, Allah knows what's in the heart. Be careful. Be careful. We've heard lots of scholars made dua, they didn't make it. Cry. And you are just not a scholar you keep crying all the time. Treat yourself. No one is saying that you're not crying, but cry is when you cry. But we find this person is cries in the particular word and say you. So extremely raising of the voice in terms of some of the dua, it's not good. This is not a khutbah, this is dua. Uh also, you know, making dua for the Sultan in the dua al winter. It's not from the Sunnah. It's not the dua for the Muslims in general and against the Kuffar in general, but not to specify the Sultan with the dua in your Qunut. And there is no such thing, dua al khatim, khatim, khatim al Quran. And also, some of the dua, the people that made the dua, the Imams, they repeat that dua for no reason. They keep repeating, repeating the dua for no reason. And also abide themselves with a particular dua, which is from the dua of the Prophet. They made it themselves and they keep repeating it. And you try to teach the people something that you made up. And also from the mistakes as well to look when they make the dua, Allahumma hina fi man handay. Ya akhi, you are looking there in your hands to the qibla. Not Allahumma hina fi man. That's not. This is where the people come with the. All sorts of uh, chaos. Allah Musta'an. By this, we'll finish. Alhamdulillah. And inshallah, next week we'll talk about the tashahud al akhir, the last tashahud. And I think, inshallah, we will be able to finish next week. Jazakumullah khairan. This, by the way, this class, uh, I'm supposed to have as well the brothers from Northampton to be there. I don't know, maybe they've forgotten and I forgot as well to give them the time, but they should have known. Anyway, if you have any if you have any um, questions, priority goes to Brixton. Uh, please uh, put your hands up, and also for the sisters which are on the panel. And I'm not gonna call anybody. I'm gonna leave everything to the co-host. Fadl. Um, we'll just start with the sisters from Brixton first. The questions. Um, first one is: If I enter the masjid. And the adhan is being called. Should I listen to it or should I pray tahiyatul masjid? Well, if you want to gain to both benefit, then listen to it first, repeat, and then make tahiyatul masjid. But if, if you know that the imam, as soon as the imam, the, the, the adhan is as soon as the adhan is going to finish, he's going to make the prayer, then just don't pray tahiyatul masjid because there will be no time. You know, like a Hanafi, Hanafi in the self actually maghrib prayer. Soon as he makes the adhan, it happens to me. I was in Pakistan, in Karachi. And uh, it was Salat al-Maghrib, the prayer of the Maghrib. And they pray outside because it was summer. And they pray outside in the courtyards of the masjid. Massive, massive. Courtyard outside. We're talking about here, hundreds of people. And I entered the masjid. Of course, there was a basket there to put the hat on. I've got my hat on all the time, but they got a basket for people to put the hat on. And Muslim of the Hanafi Madhab. Except for the brothers who are with me, Salafis, which are making coming to the masjid. I'm not saying Abu Hanifa is not a Salafi, Abu Hanifa is a Salafi. But the ones who are Hanafis, are, they do all sorts of mistakes. So then he was making his adhan on top of the minarets. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. So as soon as I came in, 
the adhan is finished. I started making the Tahit al Masjid. The brother was next to me, said, No, don't start the Tahit al Masjid. They're going to start the Iqama. In my head, I said, I'm going to continue. What is he talking about? He's a Sheikh, brother. But I didn't know that this guy is so fast, the minute is not really close. And plus, you have these stairs, you know, all on top of it. I didn't even finish maybe the, the Fatiha to go to Rukur. And he says, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. And I said to him, I didn't know. First time. Jazakallah khair. After that, never, never ever would pray the Hayat al Masjid because I know that these guys don't leave time. Type. And the, the brothers, Masha, you're giving preference to the sisters, Masha'Allah, huh? <laughs> this is the starts first. Fadl Hassan. <laughs> yeah, it's Brixton and sisters, so they get preference. But there is brothers, sisters as well, I could see there. Yeah. Um... But it's not my. This is <laughs> Nakhla. I, not my fault. These guys okay. are giving preference to the sisters. All right. To be fair, I'm going to do one and one because they're all from Brixton. And only people from Brixton, first of all, put their hands up, please. Um, Bilal uh, and Nakhla, can you um, ask me a question, please? Yes, you mentioned, Salaamu Alaikum, you mentioned um, raising your hands and saying Allahu Akbar coming up from the Tashahud. When you're in sujood going to the Tashahud, do you, can you raise your hands and say Allahu Akbar then as well? So You can. Okay. Raising up the hands, you could do it with any takbir. But remember, if you are an imam, then you have to make sure that the people know what you're doing. Otherwise, they will say, what type of prayer is this? Number two, if you are a ma'moom, don't do it. You have to follow the imam what he does. Yeah. If you're on your own, you do whatever you like. Jazakumullah khair. Jazak. You do whatever you like according to the sunnah. Whatever you like, like anything. No. Of course, of course. <laughs> uh, question from a sister from Brixton. Uh, my husband and I began to travel at the time of Dhuhr. We didn't pray Dhuhr as residents, but prayed it as travelers. We are outside the city limits already. Should we pray as two or four units? If you are outside and you are traveling outside the limits, no problem, you, you have to pray that is shortened the prayer. But if you are inside the limits, and even if you're traveling, then you can't pray the shortening. No. I mean, there was an addition to that. Does the fact that it was Doha time when we started the journey make any difference? No, it doesn't make any difference. As soon as, if you started the Dhuhr prayer, and the time started, and you started the journey, the Sunnah is to adjourn your Dhuhr and Asr, until you get to Al-Asr, you make Dhuhr and Asr at the time of the Asr. But every person who is in a journey, he is the prince of himself. He knows. So, but you could really do it as well, Dhuhr and Asr together uh, and with shortening outside the limits. But, sorry, 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 sorry. Again, I made a mistake. If you, pray, if you started your journey after Dhuhr time, the Sunnah is to pray Dhuhr and Asr at the time of the Dhuhr. It's the opposite. But if you started your journey before Dhuhr, then it's the Sunnah is to delay your Dhuhr and Asr to pray it at the Asr time. So if you started your journey after Dhuhr, so the Sunnah is to do it before you're traveling. Now you've got the option now. Either to pray it at home 4-4, four, four, or you went outside the limits of your city and then you prayed in 2-2, two, two, inshallah. Is that the question? Yes, sure. Yeah. Okay, um, uh, Abu Dhar, and if there's any other people from Brixton, please raise your hands. Barakallah, Sheikh. I was wondering, is it permissible to perform the Janaza prayer for more than one person at the same time? I don't think you have come to the class which we had talked about, the funeral procession that is last Saturday. Sept. Did you come? No, I wasn't there. Actually. That's why. So we're going to punish you now. Right. <laughs> and he, uh, uh, he said, yes, you could pray unto them together. Because like Hamza, he's been prayed with other prophets. He prayed on Hamza and other people who were with him in the Battle of Uhud. Yes, more than one person. No. no. Okay. Uh, another question from Sister from Brixton. Can someone intend to do both Aqiqah and Udhiyah on the same animal? To combine aqiqah and udhiyah on the same animal. Aqiqah is compulsory and udhiyah is compulsory. You cannot make two compulsory in one compulsory. I'll give you an example. You have to fast Ramadan and at the same time you have a vow. You cannot make that day to be a vow 
and also at the same time fasting the day of Ramadan. Another example, you have you are in Ramadan and you have some days from the previous Ramadan. You cannot say that I want to do this Ramadan, which is I'm doing, and is all the same day is going to be compensating for a missed day before that. You need an, uh, a sheep for the, uh, uh, according to your aqiqah, uh, sheep for one male, two sheep for the, sorry, two sheep for the male, one sheep for the female, for the aqiqah, and also you make your udhah here. But the difference here is that the aqiqah has no conditions like the udhah here. In terms of age wise, in terms of quality wise. Okay, in the Udhiya, you have age and you have, you can't, for example, cannot be mad, you cannot be so and so. There is certain things, it cannot be, for example, that the horns have been taken away from the head, uh, uprooted, you can't do that, and or most of the ear is gone, but that is okay for the Atiqah. Okay, um, people from Ba'an, from Rixon, you can raise your hands now, inshallah. In the meantime, um, there's a question from a sister. Is the soul blown into the person after 40 days or 120 days? Most of the scholars, they say 120 days. But there is a ishtihad that it is 40 days because of the hadith. Is it mithlu dalik? Abdullah ibn Asur, mithlu dalik means another addition of 40? Or is it the same 40? Wallahu alam. But almost consensus is 120 days. Now. Okay, uh, Faisal Ibrahim. Salam alaikum. Salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, the, the way of the four ways of the tawarruq that you normally show us, the two difficult ones where you put your foot between your calf and thigh, is that version mentioned in the Prophet's prayer described that we are studying, or is it only mentioned in Al Asl or Talakhis? The reason why I prayed like that in the masjid once, and a brother saw me, and he asked, why did I do that? So I told him I learned that from Sheikh al-Albani through his student online, meaning you. So he said, can I show him the evidence for that way of tawarruq? Well, <clears throat> the, what is mentioned in the book of Sheikh al-Albani, the word tawarruq. Tawarruq is from, comes from the work, and the work is the thigh. So the most important thing is your thigh is on the ground that you're leaning on, which is the left thigh. And as for the foot to be put there, this is where the interpretation of the tawarruq. So we have, I've learned it from a scholar, not from any person, from a scholar who are doing this. So in the, in the Sifa Salat al-Nabi is the work, you sit on your thigh. But in terms of the, to put the foot underneath the shin, between the ground and the shin, or between the shin, the leg and the thigh, okay? That one is from the interpretation of the tawarraq because we don't have how the Prophet ﷺ exactly was putting it. Do you understand me? That's where he, uh, he was strange for, for him to see that. But I showed, did you see the image? I brought you an image once. Yes, and I, I exactly, and that's the way I did it in the prayer shake. And as again, he, he was sitting next to me, and he, he was like, he said, I studied this book in detail, and I have never seen that. So it was a big shock to him. He thought I was doing an innovation shift. Sheikh, you're muted. Jabra has got a gin. <laughs> this is the device. Um, Basically, that's the difference between studying the book by itself and studying it with a sheikh. Do you understand? When you study it with a scholar, you learn from a scholar. So you learn from me because I was linked to the scholar. Okay? And he taught us how is the tawarru. Okay? So we have learned it from a scholar. That's the tawarru. Alhamdulillah. And don't worry about it. Sheikh Ibn Baz, Sheikh Al-Bani, Sheikh al all of this. He studied in details, but there are some details. For example, what about spitting on the left? Did he learn it? How? Just ask him, how do you spit on the left when you have shaitan? This is his left. Well, we learn from the scholar. This is the left. Jazakallah <laughs> khairan, Sheikh. Very good. No. Okay, can we have a Surajuddin Bad Badmos Brixton, please? Sheikh, salam alaikum. Salam to Um, Sheikh, we see some people after uh, the adhan has been called here. You see them standing, you know, being adhan wa ikama. 
and you ask them, oh, can you sit down? No, and they refuse. They stand until the camel gets cold. Is there any deal for this, Sheikh? You mean they haven't prayed the Haytul Masjid or they have? They, they haven't prayed. No, and they don't want to pray. No. Okay. Uh, oh, Allah I thought maybe there's hadith for it because I've seen even No, there is no hadith whatsoever, but these people, I know what's happening because maybe they come from a masajid like Hanafi when there is no time between the Adhan and the Iqama and there is no for them su sunnah. So I would prefer if the Imam would address them, not yourself, the Imam, the real Imam, he would tell them, Akhi, because if you want to stand behind, no problem, away. But in the front and put pressure on the Imam and other people to say that, come on, do the prayer, I will tell them off. I taught these people a very good lesson. Told them off, and also, I would delay more. Okay, let you stand up. Yalla. I'll give you 10 minutes. Let them stand up. Other people come and pray, and come and pray, and, do the, and they're still standing up. They want to pray. Okay. But I will not allow them to be in the, in the middle of the rows, or in the front rows. Go to the, go to the wall, stand as much as you want. Okay. This is your <laughs> They have to learn this way. They need the stick of Umar al-Khattab. That's what they need. Naam. Right, question from a sister. <laughs> question from a sister. Is the following dua authentic? Bismillahi wa lajna wa bismillahi kharajna wa ala Allahi rabbina. Unauthentic. Unauthentic, alhamdulillah. Um, Abu Yusuf. Sheikh, which other um, unauthentic hadith are found in Bukhari following the hadith mentioned in page 82 about um, he should stand up for bidding the hands. Well, um, I thought all of the hadith in Bukhari, since you say Sahih Muslim, Sahih Bukhari, are I, don't, I, I don't know, I'm not following what is, he's giving me a short question. Do you remember the Apple. condition is that to make it not a lecture? I, I don't understand the hadith question. Which, which, on, which other well-known unauthentic hadith are found in Sahih Bukhari? I can't hear you, Sheikh. You, you, your microphone going far and on going. Sheikh, I think he's asking which um, hadiths are unauthentic in Sahih Bukhari. Which hadith are unauthentic Sahih Bukhari? I'm going to mention to you. <laughs> no, is, it, is, it, is, it a, is it a handful? Like, can you count them with the hands? Or is there, there is no such thing that a full hadith is unauthentic. There is part of a hadith which is not authentic. But the full hadith, no. These are the hadith which has been criticized by Imam al Qutni. Sheikh Al Albani presented them as well, pointed them out. Like one of them, the hadith, any person speaks a word from the pleasure of Allah, it would raise him up. 70 ranks in the heaven, then we just set it out of this pleasure to Allah, we will dip him 70 years in the hellfire. The first part is not authentic, but the second part is authentic, and these others. And I can't really, you know, you have to go to Trifat the Sheikh Albani's books to say which are the hadith, all of them. Right, we stop here because I have to do my maghrib. Subhanakallah, bihamdik, ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu